So, last Minecraft theory had me doing a lot of tree punching. And I have no doubt that me teaching you how to punch down a tree like you do in Minecraft inspired tens of thousands of you loyal theorists out there to try it for yourself, mowing down saplings faster than an overeager lumberjack. Which is why today, I want to start the episode by making amends. Theorists, it's time to stop the punching and start the planting. My friend Jimmy, you may have heard of him, he runs a channel called Mr. Beast, is a YouTuber that's looking to make a difference. He's also from North Carolina. Ugh. I'm from North Carolina. Carolina. Yes, they know that! Mr. Beast, alongside another friend of mine, the incredibly smart Mark Rober, are currently working to raise $20 million in order to plant 20 million trees by 2020. It's a very numerically sound thing. Anyway, it's in honor of Jimmy hitting 20 million subscribers, which, you know, good for him. Not jealous of that or anything. But anyway, I'll let Jimmy and Mark explain for themselves. We went through a bunch of different options on how to pull this off and eventually settled with working with the Arbor Day Foundation. They're the largest, most well-respected nonprofit for planting trees, and we got them to agree that for every one dollar we raise, they would plant one tree. That literally means if someone donates three dollars, three more trees will exist in the world than if they didn't. It's pretty incredible, right? So if you'd like to be a part of this massive movement to make the world just a little bit greener, a donation link to the fund is in the top line of the description. A hundred percent of your donation goes directly to the Arbor Day Fund, and every dollar is one more tree in the ground. If everyone who watches this video gives a dollar, well, I don't know how many people will watch this video, but you know, it's not a hard math problem to solve. It is literally multiplying by one, so I trust you to be able to do the math in your head. Anyway, with that being said, and us making amend for all the trees that we punched down, it's time to talk zombie pigs. Hello, internet! Welcome to Game Theory! Where, gotta be honest, I am still icing my knuckles after last week. Today we're continuing our deep dive exploration into the lost lore of Minecraft by looking at what is in my opinion the strangest part of the universe. The zombie pigmen. And for me to call him out as the strangest is saying a lot, considering this is also a world full of living snowmen and laser shooting pufferfish. Maybe it wouldn't be so strange if this was a mob that was only a bipedal pig creature that lived in H-E double toothpicks, but no, it has to be a zombified bipedal pig living in H-E double toothpicks that also carries around a butter sword for reasons, and also also has no non-zombified versions of itself left anywhere on the planet. Now that is a weird collection of attributes, and if we're being 100% honest, it's probably because their origins are pretty bizarre. Tall, human-like pigs have been kicking around as an unused idea in Minecraft since the very beginning. A Minecraft user first came up with the idea for pig Pigmen way back in 2010, and the game's creator Notch almost used them as the game's villagers a year later. It didn't happen. And in 2012, Notch revealed in the documentary Minecraft The Story of Mojang that the game's signature creature, the Creeper, was also born out of awkwardly tall pig monsters. Well, I mean, the Creepers were a mistake. I don't have any modeling programs to do the, the models, and I accidentally made them tall instead of log, so it was like a tall thing with four little feet and that became the creeper. It was supposed to be a pig. So if I were to guess, the zombie pigmen exist and are connected to creepers, villagers, and normal pigs purely because of a sequence of happy accidents, coding errors, and scrapped ideas that got eventually made into canon. But that's the real story for why zombie pigmen are probably in this game. What we're interested in is the fictional story. How can these creatures possibly fit into the shockingly deep and surprisingly cohesive lore of Minecraft that we've been building over the last couple of episodes? How do you fit undead pigs from H-E double hockey sticks into a tale about an ancient civilization of long lost builders. I gotta be honest, this one started as a, I have no idea how we're gonna explain this, but by the end of my research, I think we got a pretty solid case here, friends. To start piecing together the lore of the zombie pigmen, we first have to look at their in-game behavior for clues. Now, obviously these creatures are most commonly associated with the nether, but they can, on very rare occasions, appear in the overworld. When lightning strikes within four blocks of a pig, a zombie pigman will suddenly spawn. That immediately tells us that these two creatures are in some way connected. That the pigmen, at least at one point in their history, were related to normal, everyday pigs. We also know that the pigmen share some form of psychic link. Now, that might seem absurd to say, but their hostile behavior patterns confirm it. Attack one zombie pigmen, and somehow all the others within a massive radius will become aggressive and converge on Steve. And it's not because they're 
hearing their attack friend since the sounds they make are relatively quiet. And everyone is still aggressive even if that attack happens in a completely sealed off closed box that should deaden the sound to any outside listeners. The immediacy and aggression of their attack can only mean that they're linked in some way. And lastly, it's also important to note that they don't begin as hostile. They only turn hostile when they've been attacked. So under normal circumstances, they technically have nothing against Steve. It's only once Steve becomes aggressive that they suddenly have a reason to defend themselves. This admittedly gives us a lot to work with, but it's still just a bunch of loose threads without something to tie it all together. Any theory that I would craft to try and explain it all would be missing that linchpin of evidence that anchors the narrative. But then came this year's Minecon. The Mojang team's annual interactive livestream all about the Minecraft franchise, complete with discussions about upcoming features, big world premiere announcements, and lots of other stuff. This is gonna look weird, but you can't hear. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Cause you gotta juice that sweet, sweet watch time. And this year, between gooey hands and whatever this was, we received a ton of new information about what changes are rolling out into the Minecraft world over the next couple of months. Bees, honey blocks, target blocks. But of all the new content, it was the changes coming in Minecraft 1.6, the nether update that really caught my attention. Specifically, the new piglin civilization. Zombie pigmen are no more. Pig Piglins and zombie piglins are here to stay. Piglin is actually what we call the pigmen now. The piglin is almost like a new civilization in it that we add to the nether. But there was one detail about this mob in particular that caught my attention. They are actually hostile towards the player. Uh, they also don't like wither skeletons. They don't like wither skeletons, huh? That's an oddly specific detail for them to call out. From writing all of these episodes, I gotta say that so much of piecing together this game's story relies on picking apart spawn conditions and hostile behavioral patterns. Like in any good story, those sorts of details are telling you the relationships between our main characters, as it were. And so hearing Jeb call out the hostility towards one particular mob really stood out to me. Especially since, as we established during our episode on the Wither, the Wither skeletons are most likely the remains of the ancient builder race. There are plenty of reasons as to why, but I'm not gonna rehash them here. You can just watch that video if you're interested. But for the piglins to act violently towards Wither skeletons, aka the ancient builders, that was the last detail that I needed. There's hostility between these two groups. Something happened long ago between these two civilizations, and it hasn't been forgotten, even long after both civilizations have largely died off. So let's start putting all these pieces together, shall we? We know that the ancient builders started in the overworld, and at some point they created a nether portal and started to explore down there. We know this based on the chests and the fortresses that exist down in the nether that could really have only been built by them. Now, here is where the piglins come in. At some point, the builders brought their pigs with them into this hostile environment. Again, we know this based on that lightning strike evidence. Pigs and zombie piglins are connected, and yet there are no pigs in the nether, meaning that that they must have started in the overworld. Now, there's two possible reasons for the builders to do this. The first one is simple, food. The nether, up until the announcement of the new piglin beast mob, also coming with update 1.6, hasn't had a reliable source for food. But it's also the food source in nether, actually. So when you get your food, you can't just have like a pretty little farm. Instead, you need to find this scary, <laughs> aggressive piglin beast and get the food from there. As such, any explorers looking to make a long journey to explore and forage in the area would need to bring a dedicated food source. Like, say, their stable of pigs. Bring them down to the nether, leave them there, and boom, you suddenly have pig-like creatures in a place where they have no business being. Option two for why the pigs would be down there is honestly a bit darker, and it could very well explain the hostility that exists between these two groups. Consider for a second if you had opened a portal to somewhere, some other dimension. You don't really know. Are you just gonna hop through? Of course you're not. You're gonna test it. Most likely you're gonna test it on some sort of animal. And believe it or not, but pigs are often the ones being used as human stand-ins for large-scale scientific experiments because of their similar organ size and decay rates. So, to see whether things on the other side of that portal were safe, maybe the ancient builders dropped their pigs on through, sacrificing a few of them in the name of science. Either way, pigs are brought to the nether. And I don't know about you, but that would definitely give me a reason to hold a grudge against the people who brought me there. Be they human or their undead wither skeleton. 
skeleton forms. It also helps explain the wishy-washy aggressive feelings they have towards Steve. Zombie pigmen aren't aggressive towards Steve because he's not the one who brought them there. On the other hand, piglins are now aggressive towards Steve because, hey, he's a descendant of that ancient race of builders. So that explains how a pig-like species would get into this hostile supernatural environment and why they might be mad at the wither skeletons, but obviously it's skimming over a few teeny tiny details that might also need to be explained, like how they became walking, sword-wielding, psychic warrior zombies. That's a pretty big logical leap to make there, right? Uh... Yeah, but believe it or not, it's one that can be completely explained via nether wart. Remember what I said about the nether not having much food? Well, that's gonna be true for the animals down here too. I mean, really, what would a pig eat down there? Crops require water, and it's simply not possible to place water down in the nether. As such, the only thing that they're gonna be able to eat down there is nether wart. But if that were truly what the builders were feeding their primary food source, you would expect them to harvest it, right? Well. Would you know it, but if you look at the essential elements of a nether fortress, those places that were constructed by the ancient builders as their home away from home as they explored the hostile underworld, you see bridges, a lava well room, and surprisingly, nether wart gardens. Gardens placed there to harvest the only crop that could be grown in such a hostile landscape. So we know that the builders were indeed harvesting the stuff, but then why is nether wart so important here? Well, we also know that the mine Minecraft universe is one where you quite literally are what you eat. In our Enderman video, I linked the ancient builders being forced to eat the end's native crop of chorus fruit, with them slowly obtaining the plant's teleportation abilities. And well, yes, that was admittedly just speculation, we don't even have to go into the realm of theories to prove this one. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Mushroom, a cow-mushroom hybrid that only spawns in mushroom field biomes, aka places where cows are consuming a diet primarily filled with mushrooms. Their milk is mushroom stew, their bodies are covered with the stuff, but we know at their core they began as regular cows, since when you shear them clean, it drops its mushrooms and transforms back into a normal bovine again. So, if pigs in the nether were indeed subsisting off a diet entirely made of nether wart, there's a likelihood we could see some of that plant's traits carry over into this animal. Now, here Here's the thing about nether wart. Even though I just called it a plant, it looks and acts very much like a fungus. Nether wart grows through four stages, with the middle two stages looking nearly identical. It's a process that very closely resembles the life cycle of a typical mushroom. Nether wart is known as nether stalk in the code, just like many fungi are composed of the fruit body on top and the stalk underneath. It doesn't need sunlight to grow and instead thrives in the warm, dark environment of the nether, just like a real world fungus. In fact, many of the mine Minecraft wikis equate nether wart to the real world puffball fungus, which, although different in color, does indeed match in terms of design and reproductive behavior. And all of this matters because a diet of nether wart would explain how the zombie pigmen all share a psychic connection. You see, when we think of a fungus, we immediately think of the mushroom that's on top, but in reality, most of a fungus's body is made up of super thin threads known as mycelium. And the crazy thing is that these threads can go for dozens dozens upon dozens of feet, connecting up with a bunch of other plants and fungi. So much so that researchers are now calling this an underground internet of sorts, a literal fungal network that's sharing information across plants, root to root, extending for miles. A <clears throat> wood wide web, if you will. Fungus expert Paul Stamets calls it Earth's natural internet in a 2008 TED talk, and that fungal connection could very easily carry over into our pigs. Just like we see with mushrooms, eating that nether wart fungus could slowly transform our overworld pigs into an interconnected network of pig fungus hybrids. And that's not all. Fungal networks also boost their host plant's immune systems. Simply plugging into the mycelial network makes plants more resistant to diseases. Now look at the nether wart. It's the essential ingredient for awkward potions. The base for over 90 
90% of the game's magical abilities. You know what else is a key ingredient in potions? Glowstone dust, which is also found down in the nether. Potions, mind you, that bestow the drinker all sorts of magical properties, from greater defenses, to greater swiftness, to most importantly, fire resistance. Fire resistance just like we see with the zombie piglins who are immune to fire and lava damage. In fact, this theory may even explain why we only see zombified versions of the pigmen and not normal style pigmen, the new piglin race excluded. Obviously, the ancient race of builders came to the nether a long time ago, and when their society collapsed, so did the coming and going from the overworld. As such, no new pigs were being brought into the nether, meaning that everyone we see down here has been down there for centuries at least. That, my friends, is some old rancid pork. So how could a pig survive for that long? Again, the nether warts magical properties. One of its key uses is making potions of healing. It could be that the pigmen literally cannot die from natural causes, or just like the wither skeletons, were brought back to life with the strange soul-saving properties that exist in the nether. Heck, this theory may even explain why they only carry gold swords. Look at the types of loot that spawn inside the nether fortress chests, the ones containing supplies brought into the nether by the ancient builders. The only weapons that we ever see spawn in those chests are golden swords. That's it. That's what they brought in and stored in those chests. And since these are pigs at heart with no crafting ability, all the items that you find in there, like iron ingots and diamonds, are completely useless to them. The only thing that they can use to defend themselves is just what they found laying around in their natural environment, left behind by their former masters, the ancient, abandoned golden swords. So just look at all the questions this theory answers. It explains how pigs got into the nether, why they'd be hostile to wither skeletons and have complicated feelings towards us as a descendant of the builders. It explains why we see nether wart purposely grown in the nether fortresses, and how a diet of nether wart could produce a psychic link of sorts between all the pigmen in the region. That nether wart, combined with the local glowstone, cause let's face it, pigs will eat, or at least try anything, could also explain their fire resistance, their zombification, and we even have ourselves an answer as to why they would all have golden butter swords, and only golden golden butter swords. Honestly, the only question I can't answer about this mob is why they stand on two legs. I'm not 100% sure. Could be evolution. Pigs learning to walk upright to use their hands to defend themselves in the violent nether, while also wanting fewer body parts touching the hot nether rack? It's possible. But I do think that we're onto something with this theory. Something that I suspect Mojang might just want to be cluing us in on. Because if we go back to more of that minecon footage, as they reveal the new biomes for the nether, one they spend a good amount of time on is the nether forest. And what do they explicitly show us wandering around in there? The only mob, mind you, that they show us in this preview? A zombie pigman wandering through the woods, at home amongst the food and landscape that helped to make him what he is. He's a pig, ripped from his comfortable life in the overworld, and brought down into the depths of heck to be used for the slaughter of the ancient people, but through random chance and a whole lot of fungus, becoming the start to a rival civilization bound for greatness and then turning into zombies. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder to wave your diamond pickaxe over that subscribe button. We got more Minecraft theories on the way next time, hopefully, about the villagers and illagers, though underwater fortresses are really interesting to me right now. I'll see y'all for something different next week.